place and having them talk to teachers or to guidance officers or whoever about their, their child. Well, I, I think actually it's similar to me when I think about Mothers Against Drunk Driving or even HIV AIDS programs when I was growing up in school. I'm 42. So, you know, coming into uh, high school and college in the 80s, you know, I remember those being huge, huge programs that were very effective and had, had tremendous parental support. And I grew up around Washington, D.C. and the northern Virginia suburbs. So there was tremendous, um, I remember uh, speakers coming in to talk about uh, drunk driving. There was the use of, you know, these cars that had been mutilated in drunk driving accidents parked in front of the high school. And I do think that bullying, to be effective, is going to have to have that kind of nationwide support by parents. I don't think it can just be, you know, I don't think we can go in and tell teachers, hey, this is another kind of discipline that you have to teach or another kind of emotional uh, intelligence that you have to teach kids. I don't think we can kind of push it all on teachers and say do more with less. I think we have to appeal to parents and their sense of fairness and their sense of how their kids are growing up to be part of the answer. Consi can, you, you mentioned in the past with me consistency, mm -hmm. that it has to be a, a almost a consistent and constant message. Yeah. How do you accomplish that? That's difficult. I think that what we have to do is uh, well, consistency works a couple of different ways the way I perceive it, is that we can't just train teachers. It really has to be the maintainers, the bus drivers, um, the people in the cafeteria. It's all the adults have to get together and say, we're not going to tolerate this behavior. One of the um, f most frightening things I read about when I see these cases like Carl Walker Hoover or Phoebe Prince is that there were many instances where adults might have been around and might have felt weird about what was going on, but didn't know to ask or were um, didn't know to act because they thought it was between two individuals. They didn't see it as a social situation where they're part of the answer. You know, I think it's hard as adults. We let a lot of, we're, we're not able to recognize behaviors when they're happening, or we're not even able to ask the question. And I think that's where I would like to say, yeah, consistency across all of the adults in the school and semester to semester consistency where we don't let this behavior, like you said, it, it is human nature for kids to tease each other and, and pick on each other. That, that semester to semester we do an adult check-in and also pull in some student leaders to do this across the board. And it can't just be, you know, it can't be athletes being treated differently than your, your regular students or your band or orchestra students. It has to be a consistent effort across the whole, all the cliques that are forming among the kids. And that takes a lot of work, a lot of effort and a lot of work. Yeah. And um, so, we, we, you know, we've talked about how uh, bullying can be uh, quite nuanced and and perhaps we all have a certain perception about bullying, but I wanted to get into some ideas that perhaps are myths about bullying mm. um, and, and see, so kind of get your response to that. But one of the myths is, and it's always been taught, this is the old school mentality, which mm -hmm. is hitting back is a good solution to bullying. In other words, that yeah. if, you, if the bully gets punched in the nose, then everything will stop. Um, yeah, can yeah. you talk about that? Yeah, and this is not true. In fact, what we've seen is... Um, uh, also, uh, kids who are spanked, I mean, go even earlier, um, are, tend to be more aggressive later, tend to be more violent later. We know that now, you know, we give our kids time out and we tell our kids, listen, we need you to think about your behavior. That's actually been much more effective than the old school model of, you know, uh, if a child hits another child, the adult would, would hit the child and say, see how it feels, you know, or see that, the, you know, this is what it feels like. Um, no, in fact, we, we know that that it's kind of you can't do a fight fire with fire kind of logic here it's actually the the thoughtful behavior taking bullying as an opportunity to sort of teach critical thinking to have the kid think about their behavior has been much more effective and a lot of people actually attribute that to the decrease in crime you know since we have sort of as a as a nation gone to different methods of child rearing mm -hmm. and certainly that would be the same as you know parents sometimes do say stand up for the bully or get a bigger brick or whatever you know if they throw something at you get something bigger no actually it's it's the opposite well that goes to like another myth that we have is that allowing the children to resolve their bullying uh, oh, because yeah. because children will bully will, will outgrow their bullying behavior mm -hmm. can you talk about that and that no, it's in back fact, to swift and just, I guess, right? Yeah, and in fact, that's our worry, and that's why criminal justice is so interested in the bullying behavior, and certainly I am, that we see these school-age behaviors, and, you know, again, it's much easier to intervene with a 12-year-old who is doing this kind of intimidating bullying behavior, maybe even aggressive behavior, not just psychological or verbal. Um, you know, that kid's going to grow up to be an adult bully, a workplace bully, someone who also picks out someone who's different from they are, who they have more power than, 
maybe they're their, uh, you know, a boss or a middle manager of, to harass and bully, that actually those behaviors can, can continue uh, in the life course. So, yeah, I mean, one of the things we're, we're most concerned about is, is intervening when, the, when these behaviors are in the earliest stages, when the child is actually getting um, enjoyment or thrill out of disrespecting somebody. The other myth that I think we've always thought of is that physical bullying is more serious than mental bullying. Mm. And uh, sad was just awful to see is that what uh, Carl Walker Hoover's uh, mm -hmm. case, along with Phoebe Prince's case, has in, in common. So that was more of emotional abuse that led them to take their own life. Can you talk about that briefly? Yeah, in fact, you know, words will hurt. You know, I think that that was, for a very long time, people said, well, you know, words, words are something different. And in fact, I've seen um, from some of the news reports that people are arguing that, you know, uh, many of these kids, their actual physical behavior wasn't, didn't rise to the level of crime. But actually, that's another thing that I think we're not, we could be more sensitive about, which is that children react physically to bullying, even if it's verbal or psychological. One other weird phenomenon is when we study bullies and actually the neuroscience of bullying, is we see that bullies actually get a reward from the kind of psychological abuse they're giving. And that's why, again, we have to intervene at a very early age to reverse that. Because once a child starts enjoying uh, the pain of others, you know, that's not going to stop in childhood. That's going to continue on as an adult. And it, it could destroy their lives. That could be awful and for everybody around them. Yeah. Let's, uh, I wanted to talk in the last few minutes of, this, of the program about cyberbullying, oh, which yeah. is now um, the ability to bully in a great, greater world than mm -hmm. just in the classroom or one-on-one. -on -one. Now that you have the uh, cell phones, you have the, uh, the Internet, Facebook, uh, what's the impact out there now because of tho those new issues when it comes to cyberbullying? Well, you know, this is the thing is that today, uh, as parents, you know, what we're, um, what we're talking about is our, our, our children are, have, have so much power and access to a world of communication that we didn't have as children. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of um, amazing what good can come of that because on the, on the one hand, our kids are connected up to you know, reading newspapers in, uh, in Greek or Chinese or Russian or German. You know, our kids are connected to the world in this way we never were, and that's fantastic, especially for, as an educational venue. On the other hand, this, the, the cyberbullying can also mean that uh, pictures, texts, um, even sort of PowerPoints or even mean and nasty kind of assaults on kids uh, that are, that are image-oriented can be there like permanent graffiti holding over that kid. There's no way for the kid to escape the cyberbullying. So, yeah, so I think we're in this completely new era of how um, bullying can occur. And unfortunately, I think this is part of our larger culture of a sort of uh, um, a polarized um, United States with left and right very vicious attacks. I think it kind of uh, is similar with kids. It's safer to be an anonymous bully. People feel anonymous when they, when they attack another person online and on the Internet and on Facebook. Well, if there's uh, with the anonymous posting. We get it as politicians <laughs> all the time. It's sure. Uh, and uh, sometimes I feel like I get bullied quite often in my job. But, it's, but that's, that's kind of the, uh, but I'm adult enough and I can handle it. But when you're young at a, a very tender age, mm -hmm. um, to have the whole world uh, be aware of what's going on in your life can be quite scary and, and alarming and have a huge impact on you. And we heard a story in West Springfield about how if there was a fight, they would actually videotape it on their cell phone and then post it all on YouTube and the like. And so if a child got beat up in a fight, that, was, that would be shown to everybody in the world. Elizabeth Stassenos, thanks for being with oh. us today. We, uh, I, 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 I loved having you on the show and talking about bullying. Uh, there's a lot to be talked about still about it. Um, it is not a simple thing to solve. But again, with consistent, swift, and, and a corresponding uh, response, we think that we can get to it and try to, re try to reduce it in the future. Yeah, we can. Well, thanks for being on the show. And thank you for joining us on From the State House to Your House. I'm State Senator Steve Bonacani. Thanks for being with us. <laughs>